Hi, my name is Victoria Eastwood. I'm a Managing Associate in the Disputes and Investigations team at Allens. In this session, I'll discuss a third key element of effective anti-bribery and corruption compliance systems, the clear messaging of policies and expectations through communications and training programs. Effective internal communication and training programs are important for businesses of all sizes for a number of reasons. They help articulate a business's culture, ethics and values. They deter bribery and corruption incidents by enhancing awareness and understanding of a business's policies and expectations. They can equip staff with the knowledge and skills they need to identify and deal with bribery and corruption risks and issues. And they mitigate against bribery and corruption incidents caused by employees misunderstanding or misdiagnoses of bribery and corruption risks. The key things that should be conveyed by internal communication and training programs, no matter the size of the business, include a clear zero tolerance approach to bribery and corruption, information on the specific bribery and corruption risks a business faces and an employee may face in their role, and the policies and procedures a business has in place to mitigate and respond to these risks. Regarding communications programs specifically, key components can include written policy documents that communicate a zero tolerance approach to anti-bribery and corruption, an easily accessible intranet page that collates anti-bribery and corruption policies and other resources, periodic organisation-wide emails on an anti-bribery and corruption obligations and resources, and casual verbal and email updates on anti-bribery and corruption expectations from line managers. In smaller organisations, there may be more scope to rely on casual communications by a person responsible for anti-bribery compliance. And in a larger organisation, an institutionalised communications program is more likely to be necessary. Regarding training programs specifically, the design of a program should reflect the outcome of a business's risk assessment. Training should be provided during induction, then every year or two thereafter, depending on the level of bribery and corruption risk that a business faces. Board members and senior managers, employees with high exposure to bribery and corruption risk, and employees with significant anti-bribery compliance responsibilities, are best served by receiving live training. Other employees can receive recorded training. Whether employees receive live or recorded training, training should reflect the actual bribery and corruption risks a business faces, provide information about the anti-bribery policies and procedures a business has in place, and discuss avenues for reporting bribery or corruption incidents. Training is most effective when it is accessible engaging, practical, and scenario-driven. One other point to note are that training records can be maintained so businesses ensure that employees are complying with their training obligations and demonstrate training measures to regulators and other stakeholders. A final point is that it is a good idea to roll out anti-bribery training and communications to third parties that might act on your business's behalf and expose it to bribery and corruption risks like agents, joint venture partners. In our next session, we'll provide more information on this issue by zeroing in on the management of third-party risks.